Hi, I'm Helen Race. Uh, it's spelled R-A-C-Z. It's pronounced race, like a race car. And I am invited to speak to you today about EFT. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. It was created in 1990 by Gary Craig, and he brought it as a gift to the world. Uh, he was not financially motivated. He was a successful business person previously, and he uh, brought this out and introduced it to the world. He actually filmed um, using EFT on people and sent it out to psychologists and said, try this with your clients and let me know what happens. He did this all on um, DVDs and people would come back to him with the results and um, a part of this history that would be really important for everybody going through this time now with COVID-19 and being isolated in our homes uh, with fear about our economy and, and just what, not knowing what to expect. A really big piece to know uh, is that through his sharing it, sharing EFT and developing it, it's spread through 40 countries. It's in 40 different languages. It's all over the world. It's very well known. You can find EFT on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, on the internet everywhere. There's a lot of free resources available, so it can really help you. So today I want to tell you about some of the things that I think would be uh, beneficial at this time for those of you who don't know about EFT. And for everybody who's already been exposed to it, you just might pick up a new tip or two or um, participate and have a different feeling place. So Gary sent DVDs out to psychologists and said try it with clients. And what they noticed is that as they were leading their clients through the tapping, the psychologists would tap on themselves, they were finding that they were having better experiences in life, making more money, having better relationships, feeling more relaxed, enjoying life more. And they're wondering, well, what's happening? Because I'm tapping for my clients, but I'm not really doing it for myself. And so that's when Gary Craig coined the term borrowing benefits. So it's not borrowing in the normal sense because there's nothing you return, but you get to piggyback on the benefits of other people. So this is where YouTube or books can be really, really powerful to help you during this time when you feel stressed out or anxious or you find that you're wanting to self-medicate with the food, too much food, or I don't know, online shopping or things that are in a response to anxiety that you'd prefer to be in more choice about how you show up. So EFT is very powerful. It's based on acupoints, which are the points in acupressure, um, excuse me, acupuncture, that are their master points. So these points are where uh, uh, you can access groups of energy in the body. So my very non-scientific explanation is that we have energy running through our bodies like freeways. So if you think of the freeways in the city that you're in, they're fabulous when you can go 70 miles an hour and go all over our country, right? Not so fabulous when they're backed up with too many cars or there's a, um, a car broken down or an accident and then things back up. So just like that, we have these energy um, freeways in our body. And when the energy is moving, we feel full of vitality. We have choice in how we show up instead of being reactive when we're responsive. And then Gary Craig, again, the founder of EFT, his founding statement is that whenever there's a glitch, he calls it a zzz, in the energy field, it, it, it's what causes, I've completely blundered his, um, his founding statement, I apologize. <laughs> that anytime we're stuck in a negative response is due to a glitch in the energetic system. Uh, that's still a paraphrase, I believe, but I'm close there. So when you have this in the energy field, by using words, which focuses our, our thoughts, so we're not multitasking, and tapping on these endpoints of major meridians in the body, you, most people, almost all people will find that they have a shift in the way that they feel, they have more freedom in the way they think. So it's really powerful if you're stuck in a loop. 
Now for PTSD, which if you're human, everybody has some, and some, some of us more than others, depending on your life circumstances or what events you've been through, um, the EFT was used at Fort Hood under normal research protocol with really amazing results. So today on Earth, the two protocols that are having good results with PTSD is EMDR, which is um, with eye movement in a machine, and certain uh, psychologists are, are able to do that with people, and then EFT. Uh, this is a book I love. It's on Amazon. It's I think every human should read it. Uh, I'm not sure if it comes on Kindle, but it might be a good time if you're locked at home to really dive in and understand PTSD and how it might be affecting you or people that you love. So this is a really good book. This is by Dawson Church. He wrote um, The Genie in Your Genes. Really powerful. There's also um, The Ortners, The Tapping Solution. You can Google this and see them. They offer a lot of tapping. Uh, I always recommend Gary Craig's website. Uh, it's emofree.com and he has tons of free tutorials and videos. That's a really good way to learn. Uh, there's many books. This is another one I really like on Amazon. Tessa Kaysen, she has amazing books. You can see the scripts to help you tap along. I have uh, I think three maybe or two on my website for free. You can download them and print them if you want or look at them online, tapping the scripts. Uh, I also have an audio library on my website. If you, if you like my style, it has over 2,000 original taps, all free. That can help you. Again, YouTube, uh, search on the internet for EFT and you'll be overloaded with information. Just find somewhere to start. So for today, I wanted to explain how you can use EFT without learning it, without studying forever, without being masterful with the words, just diving in to get results. So we go back to what I began with, the borrowing benefits. So the way you do it is you find either um, written script or a video, a YouTube, or an audio. So you can either read it, see it, or hear it, and you participate along with it. Before you start, you want to just kind of scale yourself. So maybe it's, <clears throat> I'm feeling lonely. Or maybe it's um, anger at uh, the government not handling something well, or the news. Or maybe you read a post on social media that triggers you. Whatever it is, you, you want to think of what is triggering the emotion. And then you want to scale your emotion zero to 10. And it would be a good idea if you're new to tapping, and even if you're not new, this will really help you get um, consistent results. Give your, your scenario a name, like anger over the post or the idiot who said, you know, whatever it is that's triggering you, um, or this feeling of isolation, this sadness um, in the morning whatever you want, pick a little title and then scale it. Tune in and see how you feel. Um, would you give it a zero? That means, no, I feel great. 10 would be really intense energy on it, negative energy on it. So you want to look and feel and then write your number down. So if you, you want to take a minute, be focused, have a target. What exactly are you working on? Which emotion, what thought pattern, what's looping, this resentment, this fear, if you can describe it a little bit, really see where you feel it in the body or if it's just your mind perceives it, and then scale it between one and 10 and actually write it down. Give it a title and write it down. And then get on YouTube, open a book, get a script. Um, Facebook, I believe, has a lot of tapping too. Find somewhere where you can tap along. And then this is the part that I found a lot of people get mixed up on. You do not need to keep remembering what your issue is or what you're experiencing. You can tap with anything anybody's doing and just repeat after them, follow them and repeat after them. And then when it's over, come back to you. Then look at the title you wrote down. This is why you write it down, otherwise you forget. And then, Think of it again and see if your intensity has changed. 
Now that might sound confusing, but once you try it a couple of times, and I'm sure if you look on, um, again, anywhere that you could, you can even Google it, barring benefits EFT, and there'll be directions that you can look up in written form if that's helpful. And then Gary Craig, of course, will have it on his website. I believe I have an introductory video with the audio library that explains it. So there's lots of ways to help you get this in a way that you can use it to help yourself. Okay, so I'll remind you of that again. And for now, let me tell you the points and how to do it and then give you an example of it. So Gary Craig first brought this to the world and he started with the karate chop place, which the karate chop tap, which is right here. You will notice some people do this. So they're hitting both of these sides together. Some people do hands and then switch sides. It's all good, you can't get it wrong. So just pick what's comfortable with you. And then Gary Craig, when he was teaching, I learned from his original DVDs, that was before you could stream online. Um, he started here at the eyebrow point and he always taught start at the top and go down. And then later they added a few more points. So you might see different people start here, go down and then end with the head. Now I was learning it, start at the top and go down. So when they added in the top of the head, I just started there. So again, don't worry if you see it in different ways. It's an amazing technique. It works no matter if your sequence is off, if you're doing it different ways, just that connection and focusing while you're touching these endpoints of major meridians is going to give you a result. You'll be very pleased. So don't worry about getting it wrong. Don't worry about seeing different people doing it different ways. Don't worry about getting the wording right. Simply focus in, set your intention before you start, and then go through a tapping and then see again, rescale it, measure it again. That part's very important so you can see that you're getting benefit and so that you do stay focused. We're very multitasking, distracted society, especially now with a lot of stress. So that will help anchor you and give you more efficient and effective results. So this is the first place, the karate chop spot. And in the beginning, we would tap here and say a positive and negative statement three times in a row. Now it's really gotten a lot more fluid and a little bit looser. If you're struggling, start with the basics, learn them, and then you, you can really freeform it and do fine. But again, if you're watching someone else, just follow along and let them lead and just measure your result. So this is the karate chop where you might say, even though I have all this fear, I would like to feel calm and relaxed, right? So there's a uh, defining what it is that you don't want to feel. Usually we name that negative. It's the, the, what doesn't feel good to you. And then saying a positive or right now it's really powerful to say, I choose to be calm. I choose to be focused on what, on the good things that are happening. Choose to help soften it so it's not an immediate, um, I don't believe it. Like, even though I'm in this fear, I'm okay. But part of you could be saying, no, you're not. No, we're not. We're not okay. And so choose is a really wonderful word. There is a method called the choice method by Pat Carrington. And I believe you can uh, Google that and find it too. It's very powerful if you want to learn that. So you say whatever it is that's bothering you. And then you say, I choose or I am safe or the opposite, or I love and accept myself is where we started with um, Gary's work, but it's evolved into any negative and positive statement. And then you would say reminder phrases. So top of the head is actually, if you put your thumbs in your ears and you came up, it would be the top of the head. Um, this fear, this fear, this fear. So it can be a short reminder statement. And again, we tend to multitask. You wanna, you wanna use words to keep you anchored in what you're doing. Easiest way, again, is just follow along with somebody else and use their words, right? And then we have the, the spots around the eyes. You want to think about a human skull like you see at Halloween in pictures, right? Um, this, this eye socket in the skull is where we're going to stay. So right here where the eyebrow begins, if you move your finger, you can feel there's a bony ridge. You can almost pinch it, right? You want to be on that bone. One hand or two, it's fine. And then side of the eye, now this is not your temple. This is that bone 
right? You've got the eye socket. It's the bone right here. If you have um, glasses on, oh, mine aren't sitting here. I'll show you. It's right under the arm of the glasses. And you just tap on that bone, gentle. And then underneath, again, you can feel the bone here. Nice, gentle tap. Under the nose, nice, gentle tap. Dip in above the chin, nice, gentle tap. Got the collarbone, you go a little bit below it, and you can tap there. And when I began, I would use a fist. And if my top knuckle was on my collarbone, the bottom three were in the right place. And I found that incredibly soothing. So I did this all the time. <laughs> you don't have to do the whole sequence unless you're really focusing in. But this I would do a lot. It, it was just very soothing to me. Um, I had one friend, she would do a figure eight here. And when she would tap on me and do that, oh, I just thought that felt so good. So find what works for you. And then there's the underarm spot. Now for us girls, it's under, it's the bra strap and the underarm. And for men, it's actually the nipple line and underarm. And some people do it this way. And then liver spleen, let me see if I can back up enough. It's right under the bust. It's as high up on the rib cage as you can get. That's liver spleen. And then if you were to face your palms together, and turn and tap your wrist, you're hitting the front of both wrists. That's two spots. And then if you were to do the backs, so now the backs of my hands are facing each other. Now I'm tapping the back of my wrist and that would be two spots. So those are all the spots that you'll be using. And again, if you're following somebody else in video, um, they may use more or less. Uh, just go with it. You, you will still get results. It's absolutely incredible. And as you're touching these, these important acupressure points, these, um, these endpoints and meridians in the body, while you're focusing on something that usually creates this really intense emotional reaction or memory, um, you are stimulating the body in a different way and you're transforming the energy. So although Gary Craig named it EFT emotional freedom technique, it's not really the emotion it's working on. It's working on the energy field and it's working on transforming the energy that you may have gotten stuck in. So Gary Craig tells a story that gives a really good example. If two people were watching a car accident, they're standing side by side on the street and they watch this car accident. They both see the same thing, hear the same thing, smell the same thing. One person goes home and is grateful it's not him or his family and he's fine. The other person goes home and he has insomnia or migraines, right? What happened? Well, there was some kind of glitch in the one person's energy field when they saw this traumatic event, right? So uh, a big piece to know is tapping doesn't appear to be logical. Um, it is once you start studying the science and all behind it, there's a, you can go down that and really learn a lot. And yet, if you can just get it out of your mind, I don't need it to be logical. If it, if it was pure logic, you wouldn't suffer. You wouldn't have anxiety um, when you're safe in your home, even though you're afraid of the future. You wouldn't let anxiety compromise your immune system or your sleep or cause you to overeat and gain weight when you don't want to, right? So it's not that you're, you're using this logic to shift things. You're actually working with the form that we're in, the body that we're in, stimulating energy points while you're using the mind to focus to create a different response to a trauma whether it's a physical injury and pain or a mental or an emotional trauma. Okay. So tapping is great for, for pain too. And again, you can Google and learn a lot about these things. So for now, I'd like to just give you um, an example. Uh, it, it's, um, it's a little odd just talking to the screen to myself, but I will imagine that you're following along with me. So uh, if you have pen and paper, it would be really good. And I would ask you to, I'm trying to think of a group one because I can't get feedback from you right away. I want to, I want to give you something that would be easy for you to use. So let's everybody just um, think about our economy right now. That's pretty frightening. So I want you to, your goal now is to think about all the people uh, that, you know, they don't know what's going to happen financially for them uh, and 
your loved ones, your friends, your coworkers, you personally, uh, your neighborhood, whatever it is, and really tune in to this, this, I call it a hairball of emotion, but whatever emotion really comes up for you. Is it sadness? Is it fear? Is it um, anger that, that you feel unsafe? Uh, that it's so big you don't understand what's going on? Whatever it is that comes up first. I mean, you could do this every day, three times a day, and you'd keep having emotion come up because it really is an unprecedented experience for us. So right now, just tune into which emotion's coming up. And if there's a thought, uh, sometimes people have a thought, it's just not fair. Um, it shouldn't be this way. Uh, somebody should do something. It's never gonna be okay again. I'm losing all this time. If you have a, a thought that is connected to the, the emotion that doesn't feel good, go ahead and use that to title your emotion. Go ahead and write that down. And now you want to scale it. Zero would be is no, I feel perfectly safe and fine. I know it's a horrible event, but I believe humanity is going to get back on track and I'm okay. Well, you know, that's great. We'd love to have you in that state because then you would be offering um, peace while, you know, the chaos is going on. Um, and that's the state you would want to keep bringing yourself back to, to protect your own health, actually, and to protect your your mind from going into low grade anxiety, which does eventually go into higher anxiety, which goes into insomnia, which eventually goes into panic attacks, right? So it would be good to keep pulling yourself back down to the present. Um, so that would be zero. And 10 would be that you're just so intensely uncomfortable with whatever emotion is coming up. So go ahead and scale your emotion, zero to 10. Just write it down. Okay, now you're going to come back to me, and what you're going to do is mimic me. You're going to tap on yourself, you're going to see me, and you're going to tap on yourself, mimicking me, and you're going to repeat the words I say, preferably out loud. It's a very strong vibration when we speak, preferably out loud. You're going to repeat, and I'll take us through a round, and then I'll have you rescale where you're at. Okay, so we're going to start here. And um, now for just don't worry about what you wrote down. So maybe you're feeling intense sadness and other people are feeling anger or someone else is feeling just plain all out fear. Or maybe somebody doesn't really know what they're feeling. They just feel a little bit of shock. In that, um, it's fine. It doesn't matter the words that I use. You just want to pay attention to me, repeat what I'm saying, and then we'll come back to what you wrote down. So that's the important piece to get, especially if you're going to use other people's videos. Okay, you don't have to hold both and keep thinking about what you're working on. Just relax and let somebody else drive and then come back to see what changes happened for you personally. Okay, so we'll just start right here. Okay, even though we don't know what's going to happen and it makes me afraid and sad. I'd really like to remain calm. Even though it's frightening not knowing how we will recover, I choose to feel peaceful and calm so that I can show up well for myself and others. Even though people I care about or people others care about are dying, I choose to be present and give through kind thought and action and support myself and others 
at this time. And then you want to come to the top of the head. All this emotion, known and unknown, all this emotion, so much emotion. And then you want to come to the eyebrow. And again, you can do one hand or two. Even though I feel all this emotion, all this emotion, I'm doing the very best I can. Side of the eye, right on the bone. Even though I'm feeling this emotion and it frightens me, I prefer to relax and make good choices to protect myself and to do everything I can to have the best experience possible. And then under the eye, right on the bone, this emotion, all this emotion. And then under the nose, this emotion is really happening, not just for me, but for everyone. Even though we're isolated from each other, we share all this frightening emotion. And then this dip in under the lip, this emotion, this overwhelming emotion. I want to remember, I am not alone. We all want the highest and best possible outcome for everyone. And then right under the collarbone, this emotion, all this emotion distracting me, all this emotion I'm seeking, I'm intending to support my body, my immune system, my mind to be healthy so that I can take care of myself and contribute to others. And then under the arm, all this emotion is really happening to everyone all day, all night. I'm seeking to know peace anyway. And then on the rib cage, as high up as you can go, this emotion, I'd like to let go of all excessive emotion that doesn't help me think and that could hurt my body. I'm doing the best that I can. And then the wrists, even though sometimes I worry and I don't know, I'd like to believe the government, the scientists, the doctors are doing their very best for all of us. And then back of the wrist, even though it's very frightening and will continue to be frightening, I'm seeking to be calm and healthy, resourceful, and do the best that I can in this hard time. Okay, and everybody take a big breath. And then look at what you wrote down and really think of it again and see if you can get back to the same level of intensity or if it came down a little bit for you. Now, of course, we picked a really big hot topic. So even if you notice a little difference, it's my intention that that's enough of a result to get you interested to go further and keep tapping. And so my time is running out with us. We only have 30 minutes together. Again, you can utilize um, audios from my website, HelenRace.com. That's H-E-L-E-N-R-A-C-Z.com. 
the audio library, a uh, lot of free resources for you. Check out YouTube, check out other practitioners. There's plenty of books available. You can Google EFT on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, and just a, a internet search will give you a lot of information. So it is my wish for all of us that we could connect through the sphere, not to stay in the fear, but to help ourselves come through this with grace and resourcefulness and support that our, our own bodies, our own minds, our own emotional state and others through finding our way into peace and calm. And so I thank you for tuning in. I look forward to meeting you at the live event uh, when that is been rescheduled to September. Uh, I look forward to meeting new friends then. Thank you very much.